So physicality versus non-physicality, it's or physical focus versus non-physical focus. Again, the physical focus is a beautiful aspect of creation. It shouldn't be renounced completely. It should simply be understood to be the tail end of your consciousness. It's the very end, like nothing really changes there. You can't really make any modifications there. And therefore, if you're stuck focusing yourself into that and taking your cue from that, you're never really changing. You never really move that much, that often, that fast. You're never that much in alignment with the truth of creation, with the truth of consciousness, with the truth of divinity. So you need to take a step back, relax, relax your excessive focus upon the physical circumstances and what they mean. Remember that they don't mean anything. They're empty mirror reflections of your previous suggestions to life, your previous state of being. And now you start inserting your own reality into creation. And now you got it the right way around. Now you understand how creation works. It works from you into physicality, not from physicality into you. If you can even get this principle and fully start seeing it, and there's so many subtleties and so many degrees to this, that you simply have to practice with it. And even if you say, yes, I get it right now, two months from now, you look back and you say, no, I didn't really get it yet at that point, but I get it now. And then two months later, you say again, oh no, I had no clue back then, but I get it now and I get it now. And that's part of the infinite expansion of your soul, of your spirit, of your consciousness, of your individuated understanding of all that is, is that you will gain greater and greater and greater and greater absorption with who you are. Greater and greater samadhi or union, as I called it in the last meeting, with who you truly are. Greater understanding, therefore, higher state of consciousness, basically. Again, sounds fancy, but it's very organic. It's simply, once you allow yourself to move and know that you are mainly a non-physical creature, focusing portions of itself into physicality, like someone throwing a, a tennis ball, for example. When someone's throwing a tennis ball, they do not go chase the ball. They do not like fly after the ball. That's what we constantly do. We throw a seed out there, we throw we plant a seed out there, we throw an idea out there, we throw a thought out there, an emotion, a state of being, an understanding, a belief, an action, and then we go chase it. What we do is we lose our non-physical malleable state of focus and connection and trust and faith and all these beautiful things spirituality talks about, which are all encapsulated by what I'm saying right now. And we become dense, we become physicalized, we feel stuck, we feel limited, we feel like we're lacking things, we feel like we're lacking the means and the resources, etc. If we stay as the guy that throws all the balls and we simply enjoy the game from that point of view, then we've got it the right way around. Then we understand that it's meant to come from us into physicality and that physicality is a reflection of us and the only purpose it has is to show us how we've been doing vibrationally, is to help us reflect upon our vibration, not upon our physicality. Don't ever reflect upon your physicality. Allow your physicality to help you reflect on you. Major difference, once again. Does that make sense? You use what you see physically, not in terms of, oh, this is solid, this is real, this is reality. I should take my cue from what I see. No, what you see should allow you to reflect upon what you've previously done to yourself vibrationally. What you've previously stated vibrationally. If you learn from the circumstances on a vibrational level, you will start to move faster and faster and faster. Your frequency will be higher and higher and higher. And at some point, this whole idea of being human disappears and you start to relate as consciousness having a vibration. And you start to actually understand the universe because you can, because you are the universe. It's your universe. So you have all the rights to start to understand it a little bit better. You know nothing yet. And I don't mean this as an arrogant statement. I know nothing yet either. Like I said, every two months, you see yourself back two months ago and you say, I didn't have a clue. Same applies to me. So we don't know shit. We don't know anything. Keep expanding, keep expanding, keep changing, keep evolving, keep understanding more and more and more so that you can let go of all the things that don't work easier and easier and faster and faster. And you can actually start to live in a vibrational reality instead of a physical reality. Now, in a vibrational reality, there is no end to resources. There is no end to what is possible. In a physical reality, you are stuck because that's what it's designed to be, stuck. A frozen snapshot of reflecting your vibration. If you forget this, which is fine, you will suffer. You will feel stuck. You will feel limited. You will feel like you are at the whim of your circumstances when you never, in fact, are. Your circumstances are at the whim of you. 
So just get it the right way around and you're totally fine. Don't dismiss physicality. Don't run away from it. Don't walk away from it. You simply have to understand that you can totally be there, present to it, face it, but have this understanding shift from, oh, this means something, to, oh, nice, that means that I was doing this vibrationally. Ooh. Now I wish to insert this. Let's go to the non-physical imagination. Wow, that picture really resonates. This perspective of life really excites me. Boom. Let me execute this. Let me be this. Let me become this. I feel great. I feel amazing. I take action according to what feels great. And then maybe a week later or maybe a minute later, it doesn't matter. I will notice something in the circumstances will stand out to me, will call my attention. What does that mean? That I should react to that? No, I should learn from it and respond according to my desire. So it's a bit of a subtle science. As you hear, it may sound a little bit like, how am I going to do all that? But it's also very simple and intuitive simultaneously, no? It makes sense. Doesn't it make sense? It's kind of logical. And it's not that different from what you've been doing. You just reverse the process. Instead of taking your cue from your circumstances, you start to understand that your circumstances will take their cue from you. No matter what you do, no matter what you say, even if you say, oh, circumstances are king, then circumstances will reflect that. You're still in the creator seat. You can never actually be stuck. Even when you keep recreating the same loop, it's only because you keep recreating the same loop, not because your circumstances are actually solid, dense, linear, and limited. It's because you are thinking and feeling in limited ways.